and gentlemen across the galaxy hey how we doing today it's the weekend i don't care what part of the galaxy you're in it's the weekend enjoy it because it's always great to be in the empire today and speaking of the empire gary put it on the screen we're talking all about admiral piet and genos's territory battles i waited all four phases to do extensive testing with uh, piet here and man bring in a nice flavor of viability not just for pvp for the Imperials out there, but also for the PvE stuff involving Genosis Territory Battles. So we're going to break down everything that I've learned in the past week with him inside of Genosis Territory Battles. And he also kind of fits in part of the problems we have with Genosis Territory Battles. You got to platoon great characters like Darth Revens, for example. Some people platoon their Darth Malik, General Grievous. One great thing about Admiral Piet is when you got to platoon, you break up teams. But luckily, he can strengthen your Imperials. So that way, when you're putting together good teams in your platoons, you also have some good leftover things that you could be using to knock out those waves here. So let's go ahead, pull him on the screen here and talk about what he's great at. Now with Piet, I didn't, uh, before Piet, let's start with this. I've been running Imperial Troopers. <laughs> this isn't anything new. I've been running Imperial Troopers in Genos' territory battles for quite a while now, even before Piet. And Troopers have no problems in phases one and two. They just steamroll because there's really no credible threat in terms of bosses that you face in the first two phases or so of Genosis territory battles now we're gonna get to phase one two three four so you're gonna see a wide variety of gameplay today a couple of different lineups we did imperial troopers for phases one and two my gosh they just steamroll and we're gonna talk how piet further amplifies this lineup here but the real challenge that i personally had with imperial troopers is running a full imperial trooper lineup and uh, some, sometimes phase three, but all the time in phase four, the most I'd ever get out of Imperial Troopers before Piet was about three out of four. It was always difficult trying to nab that fourth wave inside of phase four. And I haven't found a lineup yet with Piet to get me that last four. But the good thing is in phases one, two, and three, he's able to get you consistent four out of four victory. So that's the great thing about it with Pia. And let's actually start talking about the things that I really did enjoy, because as I said, troopers, they're already pretty fine without Pia in terms of getting, you know, some decent wins in the first three phases. But what really is great, we're gonna talk about troopers and then the other lineups that we have here. We're gonna see uh, the first few uh, footage pieces you're gonna see here are from me. And we have some footage from Captain P77 showing us what they did after they did some platooning here. But the biggest thing, that I noticed with Imperial Troopers here, who with Piet, is Emperor's Trap. We talk about how he's got a lot of Zetas. The, the Fear Zeta on Suborbital Strike is fantastic, but really, that Emperor's Trap, if you are going to be running full Imperial lineups, which is kind of the point of him, you are really going to want that Emperor's Trap, because the thing about Imperial Troopers, they were always kind of this linear snowball. Think about you roll a snowball, and it just it kind of stays a steady pace so long as there's still momentum. But the thing that Piet adds... To this is it's not just a snowball kind of going down a slight incline he really kicks this snowball and drives it down a mountain and the momentum builds up incredibly fast here and with emperor's trap that zeta really transforms him because his unique ability doesn't really do all that much but once you get that zeta added to him you start getting emperor's trap every single time and Imperial allies starting a turn or they're uh, taking it. They're attacking out a turn, for example. And Emperor's Trap only goes away when all of a sudden a non-Empire ally takes a turn or until the enemy finally takes a turn. And keep in mind, with Emperor's Trap, you're getting 6% offense increase and potency that is constantly stacking. And with Imperial Troopers, as you're seeing, the great thing about it is they really get that snowball going really quickly. All they need is that one quick kill. And luckily between the offense up from Piet and the Emperor's Trap, it's really easy to get that initial momentum going. So that way you can get all aboard the Imperial Express here. And they just start taking turns. And those stacks of Emperor's Trap really gets crazy high. And the higher the Emperor's Trap, the faster it is to get kills and you're putting out more damage and if you're getting fast kills well if you got that veer zeta and his unique ability and snow trooper elsa our girl you're getting tons of term meters. so you really the snowball just gets out of control for the enemy to handle and it's incredibly easy incredibly fast to get some quick kills and piet it's really great to see that even in between waves emperor's trap continues it's not like it resets at the start of the next round it just keeps chaining so you can enter into wave four with 50 stacks of emperor's trap and six times 50 that's a lot of damage ladies and gentlemen 300 percent offense and potency and that's where piet really comes in it's that zeta that really adds it all because the firstly genos and terror to battles high tenacity we're going to talk a bit more about tenacity uh whew, high tenacity when you're getting that emperor's trap increasing potency you're increasing the likelihood 
of being able to apply deals and the offense helps you knock them out faster because those are the three things or there's four things firstly tons of health tons of protection tons of damage from the enemy and incredibly high tenacity and luckily piet helps out with the damage part helps it with the potency part and of course you're pairing them up with things like veers and snow trooper they handle the turn meters they could try to help you keep that momentum going there so right now we're on phase three footage here provided by captain p77 and this is the point i want to get at imperial troopers awesome i wasn't able to get four out of four in uh phase works i tried out something a little bit different here but if you have to kind of mix things up because you had to put darth Revit and basil shot on platoons well great thing about piet is when you pair him up with palpatine and vader and and here we have uh darth malik in here we were still able to get four out of four so even if you don't have an imperial trooper lineup which you know definitely is a bit more resource heavy people are going to have palpatine and people are going to have vader especially since vader's in the limelight right now and you're able to get four out of four and again it really helps out having that extra boost of potency and as long as you keep that imperial momentum going you're not going to be losing emperor's trap and when you can keep getting emperor's trap going the debuffs start applying because uh, before piet i'll be front out honest here the reason why you haven't really seen many darth vader genos's territory battle of footage out there is mainly because the tenacity is so dang high and if he's not applying debuffs well the palpatine uh, train isn't going anywhere it just stops it never gets that initial momentum going because you need the debuffs to feed the beast and vader can't land those damage over time he can't land the speed down can't land the ability block and that's the beauty of emperor's trap and especially with vader everyone vader's on that merciless massacre every single time vader's taking one of those merciless massacre turns it adds to the emperor's trap so vader when he's taking his eight turns for example with merciless massacre well you're getting eight stacks of of uh emperor's trap that adds up really quickly so vader really helps keep that emperor's trap going as fast as possible now in a moment i tried out uh phase four with piat lead i figured out all right we're seeing that pit helps out with palpatine invader is making the imperial troopers a little bit better the shortfalls of imperial troopers the reason why it's hard to get that last four out of four wave mainly because you start running into the hard bosses padme shock t captain rex lead and the the issues there is padme shock t and captain rex those are all the hard counters to imperial troopers outside of pve but i tried out piet lead i was like all right i'm learning a lot of stuff here i want to try out piet lead because he reduces the speed of the opposing enemies through zealous commander and he increased the offense and potency it's like all right maybe here with po the potency led on zealous commander and then we have the emperor's trap we can land more debuffs and it seemed to be that way we were landing a ton of debuffs with vader for example that aoe that vader normally does a force crush normally just gets <laughs> it gets pushed to the side by these clones and all these other people on the field but pet really helped keep those debuffs applying through the lead and through emperor's trap but then eventually when we got to well wait a little bit into wave two and wave three i'm not sure if it's because the tenacity keeps stacking higher and higher so the threshold to applying debuffs gets a little bit more difficult i did notice the momentum started slowing down a little bit and i'm not even sure if i'm 100 percent sold on this lineup that i brought into here i definitely think i probably should have only brought one tank either gary or just sherry the short trooper and then put in maybe imperial probe droid or some other imperial to fit in that last lock so he ran a double tank and i just felt like there wasn't any forward movement going on at this time i mean heck maybe even magma trooper could have been a bit more helpful we're moving termeter from the opposing enemies of course you only get one shot you do not miss your chance to blow here so again when we get genos's territory battle coming around again i'll probably try a different type of lineup but pet lead was okay i don't know if that's going to be the way to go but it's nice having that reduced tenacity on the enemy with that lead increased potency on the lead and then emperor's trap of course so i definitely felt like there, there's a lot less potency issues when you're running Piet, whether it's Palpatine, whether it's with the Imperial Troopers, or in this case, uh, Piet lead. I feel like we didn't have that much of an issue applying Divas. That's really the biggest point I want to put out there of Piet is that he really helps make the high tenacity problem in Genos' territory a lot more manageable because really the only way you're able to get Divas to apply before is trying to get some, some sort of tenacity down. And in this case, it's kind of an arbitrary tenacity down built into his kit, whether you're running him as the lead or through Emperor's Trap. So those are the biggest takeaways for me here. And then here you're going to start seeing we start to crumble here more towards the end. So great news besides just being a character that's making Imperials a lot more competitive in PvP. And he's needed for Gucci Sweater Papa team. He's helping make the Imperials a lot more useful inside of Genos' territory battles. I like him. I like what he's doing for the Empire. He's not... He's not really breaking the game or anything crazy like that, but he's making the Empire more useful inside of PvE stuff and making it more competitive in PvP. And I can only imagine how he's going to be useful with Gucci Sweater Palpatine. And I guess it really is going to depend if this future Galactic Legends Palpatine is going to be considered an Empire. Oh, I hope he has the Empire tag. If he's an Imperial, whew, Empire is going to be set in stone for a long time. But this Emperor's Trap Zeta 
is incredibly important. Oh, we completely forgot about this. Besides the lead and uh, his Emperor's Trap, he also just grants a, a, just a plus 20% potency to Darth Vader right there. But this Emperor's Trap, if you're trying to get uh, those debuffs to apply more often or trying to get your Imperial Troopers to get more consistent kills out there and get out more damage and keep their train going, Emperor's Trap is going to be good. Both of his Zetas are very solid. The Fear on here is fantastic and Emperor's Trap. But I got to say, if you're focused more on PvE, probably Emperor's Trap is going to be a lot more important to get that Zeta on over Suborbital Strike. Both fantastic Zetas. You can't go wrong, but I got to say, Suborbital Strike didn't help me out that much inside of Genos' Territory Battles this past week. But Emperor's Trap definitely is the biggest highlight here. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to wrap it up right there. Let me know what your thoughts are down below. Show your love for the Empire. As I always say, it's great to be in the Empire today. And if you're a loyal Imperialist, Piet, and oh boy, we'll see what's around the corner here. I only can imagine what the future's gonna bring. Thank you guys so much for watching. Like if you did enjoy the video, comment down below on all your thoughts. And what do we say, Gary? Be sure to subscribe so you're not missing a thing. And we'll see you lovely people in the next video. Somebody roll out that outro.